Secondly, now, the biggest piece is a cliff vesting system we need in the state. And we don't have that in our pension system at all. Cliff vesting means that if you get a match in your fall, in your fall 3B, or in our, our cases as corporate, a 401k, that you don't receive the full vest up to 10 years. You get 10% a year of your match that they give. How many people take the money and run when they get the, if they're in the system seven, eight years and get the interest money back? They can take that interest of three, four percent on their money and run. That's money out of our taxpayers' pocket, out of the public purse. That needs to change because these are the things that will definitely put our state back on the map, put us on, on the lead for pension reform in this country, and give our citizens a defined contribution plan. Now. I look at it like this. The reason I came into this race, after 20 years of sitting on the sidelines, helping other campaigns, being involved in civic organizations in the towns, I've been a part of Kiwanis, I've been a part of many other community organizations as a volunteer, I sit on many charitable boards, and I'm also very active in the senior community and the long-term care fields as well. And the reason is that all citizens of Rhode Island need a voice up there even though I'm running on District 58, I'm a voice for you, the citizens of the state of Rhode Island. Thank you. system, every employee in my office, I get a copy of their driver's license, a copy of their social security card, and I submit it through the federal system for two reasons. One, I'm in the financial business, so I think every business owner should have to do it. I also think that the state should have to be forced to do it, because the problem we have in this state, and I know this from my wife teaching in Providence, is we have a very large illegal population receiving our money. It needs to stop now. Small business tax reform. Eliminate the corporate tax fees. Eliminate the corporate filing fee. But my favorite one, use the gas tax for what it's meant for. They're looking for three million three billion dollars for roads. We have the highest gas tax in the United States. It's supposed to be used to improve our roadways. It's not being used. How many people realize the lottery was supposed to be used to fund our educational needs in the Gambling and Twin River? I guess we must have missed the boat on that one because the General Assembly since 1986 has not used the lottery monies to fund education, and the only thing that keeps going up is our property taxes on the education side of the line. That needs to change, and those are bills that will champion the General Assembly to get business back into this state. Because as a small business owner, I've worked for big and small business in my career. I've watched big business go out and we almost have a job when Quick and Riley pulled up stakes, sold to Fleet, and the Fleet sold to Bank of America, and a thousand jobs walked out the door at each merger. I watched that happen right under my eyes. And the reason they pulled out of Rhode Island, they couldn't afford to pay for it. Because they couldn't afford the taxation anymore in the state. Now, create a competitive healthcare system. As you heard me speak earlier, I'm in the industry. I'm not gonna say I'm biased about, but we need competition in this state. We also need a competition in the single person healthcare market. 
We have an unconstitutional monopoly that we're being taxed on right now called Blue Cross Direct Pay for those people who cannot get health insurance any other way. That needs to change. There's a policy right on the line of Connecticut by United Healthcare called Golden Rule that Chris Cole, our insurance commissioner, blew out of Rhode Island because of the people who made him health insurance commissioner won't let them talk about it. And Golden Rule is very competitive. Trust me, it's more competitive than Blue Cross because I actually sell it in Connecticut. And I can tell you, when you walk into healthcare in Mass or Connecticut and sell it, you have 10 companies within 10% of the premium. You get a choice. And right now, we don't have a choice. We've got to pick between two premiums out of equal and two health coverages regulated by a General Assembly. That needs to stop now. <laughs> my fourth and final component of my campaign is education reform. And I'm going to address the situation tonight that happened on Projo on Sunday after my announcement. And I normally wouldn't do this, but due to the nature of the campaign, I'm going to. Yes, my wife is a school teacher, but I truly believe in education reform. I believe in charter schools. My wife's a school teacher, and I, I'll tell you what, I, I think the unions need to realize something in this state. They need to have fair, equitable contracts, yes. And they need to realize that pension reform is necessary to balance our state budget. And I will help Boston on the Senate side of the line, being in the financial sector, show them how it's done. Because the biggest piece of that is we need three things. New employees need to go into a defined contribution plan called a 403B plan under the federal government code. Now, the three components to make that plan work for a state of Rhode Island, age-based scale for contributions and matching. Every one of us goes into our 401Ks, we go in, we get an age-based sliding scale, but we get matched. Just like corporate America. It'll save the state millions right there. And the current plan. See you later. That's it. Cut it off. Those who are in it now that are vested either take their contributions and put it into a 403B or, or use the current plan for those that are retired that are vested. Anybody under 10 years, put them in the new plan. Because that'll save the state approximately $2 million of the unfunded liability of those who are not vested in the plan today. Secondly, now, the biggest piece is a cliff vesting system we need in the state. And we don't have that in our pension system at all. Cliff vesting means that if you get a match in your, fall, in your 403B, or in our, our cases as corporate, a 401K, that you don't receive the full vest up to 10 years. You get 10% a year of your match that they give. How many people take the money and run when they get the, if they're in the system seven, eight years and get the interest money back? They can take that interest of three, four percent on their money and run. That's money out of our taxpayers' pocket, out of the public purse. That needs to change because these are the things that will definitely put our state back on the map, put us on, on the lead for pension reform in this country, and give our citizens a defined contribution plan. Now, I look at it like this. The reason I came into this race after 20 years of sitting on the sidelines helping other campaigns being involved in civic organizations in the towns. I've been a part of Kiwanis. I've been a part of many other community organizations as a volunteer. I sit on many charitable boards, and I'm also very active in the senior community in the long-term care fields as well. And the reason is that all citizens of Rhode Island need a voice up there. Even though I'm running our District 58, I'm a voice for you, the citizens of the state of Rhode Island. Thank you. Absolutely. As a private employer, I subscribe to the E-Verify program through the I-9 system. Every employee in my office, I get a copy of their driver's license, a copy of their social security card, and I submit it through the federal system for two reasons. One, I'm in the financial business, but I think every business owner should have to do it. I also think that the state should have to be forced to do it because the problem we have in this state and I know this from my wife teaching in Providence, is we have a very large illegal population receiving our money. It needs to stop now. <laughs> Don't you think it's, it's important, like, as, as a candidate, if you did get elected, that everyone has to start exposing, not to, you know, call it tattletailing, but exposing and tattletailing on the corruption because- 
if they don't do it, it's almost like if they're not, if no one's saying a word about it, exposing it, it's like we're just we're compliant. Thank you, Pat. And those are all the candidates that are run and still that you select, they have to start blowing the whistle because it's not earmarks, it's absolute highway robbery. It's theft. It's not earmarks, it's theft. Thank you. Right, right. Their RICO offenses, it's bribery, it's criminal activity. I agree. And that's what we're dealing with. And I, I'm, I'm, in, not yeah, I'm thanking you for the layup because those of you who saw my speech on Saturday and saw the angry American on the news that was pointed at that. <laughs>